But Jung is more influenced by religion, and he doesn't agree with him. Therefore, they had differences, some differences. There's a book, it's called Jung and uh, Tibetan Buddhism, where Jung said that the Tibetan Book of the Dead has had influenced him a lot. He said that this book is, has been with me all the time, and uh, lots of my discovery and um, my theory is based on is based on uh, the teaching of uh, this book. But when we look at Jung and his, and his theory, we can see that his view is different than Freud, um, but his view is still rather superficial. Uh, or at least on the uh, superficial level. I think he only got more influence from that book. Anyhow, um, because of the difference of the ideas of Jung and Freud, um, I think they had very different ideas. Later on, I think Freud Freud thinks that dream is mainly based on the previous habits or pre or or subconscious that happened previously. Let it be inside the, their their uh, habitual patterns or so on. But Adler thinks that. It is more related to the future. I think it also is because of his childhood experience. Although Freud, at the end of his year, uh, later of his years, though two of his um, disciple or colleagues didn't continue with his tradition, they all developed their own thinking, but uh, he also con contributed quite a bit to the Western psychology. From certain aspects, we can see that their thinking is not completely based on their enlightenment, their realization, their actual practice, their understanding of the nature of mind. In fact, their study is based on the analysis of uh, uh, the mad people or going through the analysis of their own experience. There is a saying, I think it's quite witty, it says that everyone in this world uh, has a, a psychological problem, except it is only that everyone has different psychological problems. I think this kind of witty saying is very similar to Buddhism's view of that People have all kinds of inflictions, uh, all, all kinds of afflictions. Uh, only that through psychology, they didn't really talk about it in on that level. Therefore, as Buddhists, either uh, from the angle of psychology or the angle of Buddhism, we should stand at a point that is rather impartial, and uh, we should try to experience and try to practice, put things into practice so that you know, you understand what Buddhism is teaching. Let it be distraction or dualistic thoughts. Um, all different things could um, bring you different insights through such um, uh, practice. In in the Shrangama Samadhi Sutra, it says that, first of all, you should develop awareness and not enter into samsara. But without awareness, 
you are ignorant with confusion, that can only lead to uh, to hell realm, to be born in hell realm. That is the necessity of it. To accomplish this, we need to stop looking at harmful circumstances as problems and make every effort to view them as beneficial. If we want to attain this kind of realization, seeing illness and uh, so on, as the object of uh, um, happiness rather than uh, unwanted uh, object. I think this is quite important. These kinds of obstacles should be viewed as merits. Let it be illness, slandering criticism, or harmful actions from others. All of those should be viewed as um, benefits rather than harmful actions. After all, whether a thing is pleasant or unpleasant comes down to how it is perceived by the mind. In fact, like it or not, uh, you prefer it or not, it is really based on how your mind grasps, how your mind uh, created such kind of uh, um, fixation. And then the, uh, there's an example. Take an example, someone who continuously who continually do, uh, dwells on futility of ordinary mundane preoccupations will only get more and more fed up as their wealth uh, or circle increase. There are people who really don't want to be in crowds, circles of people, don't like wealth or fame. Then they would see busy circumstances or ordinary mundane preoccupations as uh, uh, obstacles. They would feel that, oh, I really don't want fame. I really don't want too much money. What should I do about all these burdens? On the other hand, someone who sees worldly affairs as meaningful and beneficial will seek, and beneficial and will seek, and even pray to have such affairs to increase their power and influence. Such as um, lots of the uh, leaders in our world, they want to gain more fame and more money. Uh, they would admire so and so who earned more money, so and so became the new deputy chief, deputy uh, director, so and so started driving luxurious cars. But those kinds of things are, in fact, meaningless. To to uh, good practitioners, good renunciants. So for the same kind of uh, situation, such as fame, luxurious cars and house and so on, people would view it very differently. For people with um, such fixation on them, they would really enjoy it. They would want more. They wish that they have uh, more crowds of people, circle of people to follow them. But for renouncing it, for the same circumstances, they would view them as harmful. Similarly, once you get sick, um, good practitioners would think that I can transform it into practice. That's wonderful. But for people who are weak-minded, they would think that I'm not going to die. So it really depends on how people would view the same situation. Just as a lama used to tell me, uh, told me that I don't want to go to hospital because those hospitals are terrible. Uh, it 
if they told me that I am on late stage cancer, what should I do? I can't do that. So for the same circumstances, uh, people view it very differently. Um, maybe we would stop it here for people who view uh, a preoccupation as man, uh, as beneficial. They would uh, view it as uh, uh, beneficial. They would view it as uh, beneficial and uh, wanted. So I'll give you the oral transmission now. Mm Lopin Chubum zonin drawer, 